Praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Stephen Shelley, and you're watching The Eagle's Cry. Welcome to the program today. We've been having a study for the past few weeks now on exercising the senses of our spirit. We are spirit, soul, and body, triune beings made in the image and in the likeness of God. And we have been created to function with a dual functionality. In other words, we have been made to function in the earthly realm and also in the heavenly realm, the spiritual realm. And I'm anxious to continue this study today, but before we do, I want to let you know that we are thankful for your watching. We are thankful that many of you have taken the time to share your prayer request, uh, to let us know you're watching and what country you're watching in. It's been an encouragement to us, and I want to encourage you, if you haven't done that as of yet, to please take a moment of time to contact the ministry and let us know that you're watching and perhaps some of you would like to have the entire series on exercising the senses of our spirit in DVD. We can make that available to you if you contact our ministry. We'll let you know how you might be able to have that in your home. Because it's very difficult it, with a subject this broad and important uh, to get everything packed into one a episode and so we're kind of trying to build there's a lot of repetition and so forth and I think it would be an interesting thing to be able to see it again and uh, write the scriptures down and go back and study them for yourself because I believe there's a lot of truth that God wants to show us in this day about how we should be walking in the spirit and not after the flesh so let's get right into the study Let's go right back into the scripture and see what we can find out from God's word today. Okay, let's do that. Let's read uh, first in, uh, we were studying last time in 1 Corinthians. We were talking about in chapter 15, verse 49. But I'd like to begin reading today in verse 45 of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. The last Adam, now who was the last Adam? Yeshua, the Lord Jesus Christ, was made a quickening spirit. All right, that's good. That's important. Verse 46, how be it that was not first which is spiritual, but that which is natural, and afterward, that which is spiritual. Adam was created first with a natural body. Then God breathed breath into him. He became a living soul, having then both soul life and spirit life. Then the Lord Jesus came, and he came uh, as a quickening spirit. I like that very, very much. And the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 47, the first man is of the earth earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. He is of the heavenly realm. As is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. You see, we've been invited to be partakers together of the divine nature. The heavenly nature, the nature of that which is spiritual, the Lord Jesus Christ. We not only are to function in the earthy or earthly realm, but also walk in the spirit. You know, the Bible said if we walk in the spirit, we will not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. There's great benefits to walking in spirit life. By living out of your spirit that has been rejuvenated, resurrected by His Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit quickening and making alive that part of you, your human spirit, that has been dead, deadened, dulled because of the fallen nature of man, because of what took place with the fall with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, that spirit ability, that ability to live in the spirit and to fully understand 
uh, Adam's dependency on his creator. That was lost in the fall. By the born-again experience, that is renewed. It is resurrected. And we are learning to come to spiritual maturity to allow that spirit life to develop in us. Uh, I like this verse. Let's look at it again. 48, as is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. But we've been called to function in both realms. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, that's what this physical body is about, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. This is not just talking about a resurrected body physically in the great resurrection. It's talking about bearing the image in our spirit man of that which is spirit, the very character and nature of the Lord Jesus Christ. Although it is in context, it is also speaking to us of the changing of our mortal body putting on immortality, corruption, putting on incorruption, absolutely. But there's something about bearing the image, the express image of that which is life, of that which is spiritual, of that which is God. And we're called to display the character of the Lord Jesus Christ. But in our earthly, carnal nature and in the realm of the soul, we cannot accomplish that. Absolutely not. It's only when we surrender our human spirit to the authority of the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus comes and sits on the throne of our spirit man and lives out of us. Oh, this is His life living. That's why some people fail so miserably at trying to live a Christian life, keeping all the rules and commandments and so forth. It's because they try to do it in their soul's power, in the, in the, in the life that is only of the flesh or of the soul. But if we could truly surrender, I mean all the way, surrender so that the Holy Spirit lives out of us, he lives out of our human spirit. Then we're really making progress. And this is full adoption. And this is the manifestation of the sons of God. And this is the oneness and the union that we're talking about. This is the intimacy. This is really the intimacy message of how we are to become uh, intimate uh, intimately acquainted with the Lord Jesus Christ. That's really what it is. This is how intimacy develops in our life. The enemy is very active to keep us earthbound. He wants us living only out of our soul. He only wants us living on this earthly plane, this earthly dimension in the realm of the soul. But we're coming as a, as a body of believers who are being called by the Word of God and by the Holy Spirit in this hour. We're coming into a place of true dependency. I mean, we're coming back to a place where Adam uh, had a walk that Adam had in the beginning where he realized, I am nothing without my Creator. And you know, we've done it all. We've been there. We've done that. We've, we've seen a lot as humans and as Christians. But after all has been said and done, we are realizing that, that we're just miserable. We're just miserable without true dependency on Him. Jesus, come and live in us, through us, minister through us, heal the sick through us, save the lost through us, deliver the captive through us. You see, it's like the prayer that Jesus uh, prayed and taught the disciples to pray. I love the whole, uh, the whole of what we call the Lord's Prayer. But there is a lot of it. Well, all of it is, is, of course, relevant to where we are right now. But there's something about this phrase that really speaks into this message. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And you know, really, as believers, we cannot truly, sincerely pray that prayer your kingdom come, your will be done, until first we have sort of prayed a prayer that says, my kingdom go, my will go, your kingdom come, your will be done. In other words, there has to be a crucifixion of our own will and a full surrender to His will. 
that we're coming into that place of intimacy with the Lord Jesus Christ so that he can teach us by his spirit how to function in those heavenly realms, in those spiritual realms, because we want to hear that word behind us saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. I think uh, more than anything else, I hear the cry of God's people for clarity. They say, we want clear direction. It's like the enemy is always coming to, to confuse the, the message that God's trying to give us. It becomes cloudy. Our dreams are cloudy and vision is cloudy. We see pictures. It's like we're still in some way seeing through a glass darkly. And we know that that's not the promise of where we ought to be in this hour. And so we're trying to see what it is that God would have us to do so that we can break out of the rut and out of the routine of mundane Christian existence and step up into the life of the kingdom. We're living in, uh, in the realm of the kingdom of God coming down on the earth. Uh, people functioning with the same authority that our Heavenly Father has. This is the adoption. This is what we've talked about many times, walking in the realm of the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 6 says, And has raised us up together. Here we are. We're being lifted up. Lifted up in the Spirit. And He has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Do you know one of the things that God is saying in this uh, scripture through the apostle to us is it is a change of perspective. We need a change of perspective sometime. We see things so much from that earthly plane, that earthly dimension, that earthly realm that we've been talking about. We judge everything with that earthly judgment and discernment. And I often pray, when I'm praying, I often say, Lord, from where you are, you see things so much differently than I see them. Because I'm seeing them this way and God's looking down on them. And we need to ask the Lord to help us to exercise, to use the senses of our spirit man so that we can begin to sit together in heavenly places with Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. And then look at our problems from heaven's perspective, looking down. We're up in heavenly places spiritually, sitting together with Him, and we're looking down at our problems. And I promise you, our problems will look a whole lot differently when we see them from heaven's point of view. That's why I love the eagle. I love the eagle so much because he was chosen, created by God to soar into the places of the heavenly. To see things from above and not from this earthbound existence. Oh, wow. I, I just really sense the oil of the Holy Spirit speaking to somebody. It's time for you to come up. It's time for you to come up into heaven's point of view we are raised up together hallelujah and made to sit together there is a higher order of life that is available to the spirit-filled believer we're living so below our privilege we're living so below where god would want us to live and function the redeemed of the lord are to be walking in newness of redeemed life, redemption life, full of hope, full of authority, moving in the Spirit, hearing what the Spirit is saying to the church, the Holy Spirit. Our human spirit has to be sanctified, redeemed, so that the Holy Spirit, of course the Holy Spirit does that, the Holy Spirit brings the regeneration and the resurrection to the human spirit. And then we ask the Holy Spirit to come and live through our spirit, to, to rule our lives. Do you understand? In this redemption, we are given spiritual senses, senses of the spirit. 
These spiritual senses are, a, are like a counterpart of our natural senses, and they're just as real. I want to tell you, our spiritual senses are just as real as our natural or earthly senses of taste, smell, uh, a touch, sight, hearing, so forth. Just as real as our five earthly senses, and there are more, help us to be connected to the earthly realm. There are certain senses or sensitivities of the human spirit because of what the Holy Spirit is doing in us that are just as real, and they help us to stay connected. You know, we need a big spiritual Q-tip to clean out our spiritual ears so that we can be tuned in. It's like a radio. Does anybody listen to the radio today? They used to anyway. And it's like these frequencies that bleed over. You're trying to fine-tune your radio so that you can. And this is what God is saying. I want a people that are coming into a place of fine-tuning their ear. So that we're not hearing through the flesh. We're not hearing through our soul. But we're hearing through our spirit that has been redeemed. Regenerated by the Holy Spirit. It's a very, very important place that God's calling us to walk. Now these spiritual senses only operate in those who are redeemed. It takes the resurrection life of Jesus to give us back what was lost by Adam and Eve in the garden. Ephesians 2, we just read Ephesians 2, 6, but Ephesians 2, 2, 2, chapter 2, verse 22 said, In whom you also are built together, formed together for a habitation of God through the Spirit. Not through the flesh, not through the soul, but through the spirit. You're built together as a habitation. You know, we're not just looking for God to visit us. We've had visitations. Historical revivals of visitation. But we're in the end of days. We're, we're in that last cycle of God's redemptive plan. And so another visitation is not enough. Thank God for visitations. Are you saying we don't need any? No, visit us now. Visit us now. We need visitations. We need revivals. We need outpourings. We need stirrings. Oh, yes. But we're contending for more than a visitation. We're con Listen, I'm contending for every promise in God's word that teaches me that God wants to do more than show up. He wants to show up and stick around. He wants to come and take up his abode. He wants to tabernacle. I'm getting excited now. He wants to tabernacle in his body, in his corporate body, in his bride. Wow. <laughs> this is what God is after. And so we say thank you for your visitation. But Lord, build us up. Till we come to a place where we are a, a habitation for the Most High God. How will we get there? Through the Holy Spirit taking charge and dominion and authority over our regenerated, redeemed, sanctified human spirit. You follow me? Now, here's another interesting verse. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 speaks to us about the nine spiritual gifts. Now, there are not just nine spiritual gifts. There are many spiritual gifts. There are many redemptive gifts. But these are nine spiritual gifts that appear in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1. Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Now, when you're reading the King James Version of the Bible, and I assume it's also true in other versions of the Bible, you will sometimes see words that are in italics. Do you know what that means? A word that is italicized. Basically, it's slanting the words a little bit 
to the side. Instead of having the letters straight up and down, it slants them over to the side. But it is something very interesting to notice in Bible translation because when you see a word that is in italics or as we say has been italicized, you know that it is a word that has been added by the translators to clarify, to make plainer the original text. Now, that's, I, I have no problem with that. Sometimes it's an of or a the that has been added that basically does not change the text but amplifies or helps us to understand or causes the text to flow better. But in this particular verse of Scripture, the word that is italicized is gifts, which means then that the word gifts has been added by the translators. So how should it read? It would normally then read, now concerning spiritual. However, that word spiritual is a plural. So it really would read, now concerning spirituals. Brethren, I would not have you ignorant. Concerning spiritual senses, spiritual gifts. It's a Greek plural and it should read spirituals. Our spirit is recreated or resurrected, regenerated through the new birth. By which our spiritual senses are somewhat restored. But they must begin then to develop and mature. That's part of what this verse of scripture is saying. I want you to understand spirituals, spiritual gifts, and spiritual senses. I wouldn't have you to be ignorant. I want you to walk in full knowledge, full revelation, full understanding, the apostle is saying. How is that possible? How is it possible for us to develop that part of us that is spirit life? Well, we know how we develop that which is natural life. The physical body, we take care of it. We nourish it. We bathe it. I mean, come on. We have to take a bath every now and then, hopefully. A shower. Maybe you only take one once a week or something. That's that's your business. It's not my business. But on occasion, you have to bathe your body with soap, please, and hot water. You, you, you scrub and you clean your body because, uh, in fact, you know, if you want to get very technical, there's tremendous research uh, by a, a doctor, a, a Jewish believer, a Messianic believer, one who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ, who's written a tremendous book and study called The Maker's Diet. And I'm not here to uh, promote that, but it's a very interesting study. And it is one that has come out of his own personal experience where he almost died. Dr. Rubin, Jordan Rubin, uh, he almost died and began. His father was a naturalist and, and they studied and they, they, they found out so many interesting things. And one of the things that he teaches so much is, is cleanliness. And he even encourages people to uh, scrub under their fingernails Because we carry bacteria under our fingernails. And he even encourages people to wash out their eyes with a cleansing solution. To wash out their nose with a very natural, to to take up some of this uh, water, cleansing water up into your nose and and so forth. Um, Because of the uh, bacteria that we take in and research says that a lot of sickness is transmitted that way. The skin is a big organ, you know. Uh, it is an organ of the human body. And, and it is sensitive to absorbing things and so forth. So it's important to be clean. I didn't know I was going to give you a lesson on hygiene. But this is how we take care of the human body. And this is also how we need to work on our soul Our soul needs to be sanctified. We need to sanctify our memories, our imagination, our conscience, our affections, and our reasonings. 
They need to be cleansed. And so does the human spirit. Now, how if the, if the physical body is cleansed by water and washing and the soul is cleansed by sanctification, by the washing of the water of the word, how is the spirit cleansed in the same way, in the same spiritual way? Waiting in the presence of the Lord. Did you know that worship is not about you, it's about God. But you receive the biggest benefit. You receive the biggest benefit. Did you know that worship is cleansing? To empty yourself out, that's what worship is. It's an outflow of what is on the inside. It's an emptying of all that you are. Pouring yourself out like water, like oil. On the feet of Jesus Christ. When we do that, it's, it's a cleansing that takes place in our spirit man, in our soulish life. Oh, Father, help us to spend more time in quiet intimacy, quiet worship, quiet reflection, meditating on the Word of God, letting your spirit absorb the Word. How do you do that? Well, you do that by not trying to interpret it at face value. The soul likes to grab it and take it. At, 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 you read it. Oh, I know what that means. But you know, sometimes we don't read it and know what it means. Sometimes we have to ponder it. I, I have to take verses of Scripture back to God. He's the author. I have to take them back to him sometime and say, Lord, I'm, I, I, I'm getting it, but I'm only getting it on the surface. I want to understand the deeper levels of your word. I believe that revelation comes in layers. And I don't want just the, the surface layer uh, or the soul, that which the soul grabs a hold of first. I want every word of God to nourish also, cleanse also, sanctify also my spirit. Uh, another way that we take care of the earthly body is by feeding it. We eat good food, healthy living food, food that is alive. Did you know that's part of what's wrong with us uh, in, in, in America, especially and around the world? It's what we eat. We need to be more careful about what we eat in the natural and in the spiritual. So, Father, help us. Lord, I just ask that you would help us to learn how to take care of our spirit man, to cleanse him, and to nourish our spirit man. Father, help us to enter into those places of worship in you where we just pour ourselves out, empty ourselves out, and then we say, Lord, fill me up with you. I want to get all of me poured out so that I can be filled with you. Father, I ask you to make this word alive in the hearts of every listener. In the wonderful name of Yeshua, the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Well, I'm so grateful that you have tuned in today. And I want you to tune in again next time. To finish this series. We've got several more programs to go before we get it all out. But I'm enjoying it and I pray that you are. God bless you. Thank you for watching The Eagles Cry. Tune in again next time. Bye-bye for now.